Hey everyone, this is Jay from eToro, also known as Jay Nemesis. Uh, as you can see, I've got a new format for these um, update videos. Uh, I've basically created a, a PowerPoint. The idea of this, this is that it will be a lot more consistent and a lot easier for me to produce and hopefully uh, just better information for the people that are following me on eToro specifically. So I won't go quite as in-depth on my views with uh, cryptocurrencies and things that aren't directly related to the trading that I do on eToro in these videos. So uh, without further ado, I guess let's get started. So this is the overview of what we're looking at this week. Um, there's quite a bit of news that's happened. Uh, Tesla's new semi-truck was finally revealed after some delays. Um, some news about Square, Ripple, and of course the Segwit 2x fork that actually did take place um, this week. So uh, for the crypto news, um, the Segwit 2x fork took place and was a disaster. So you won't have noticed this if you're on eToro, but um, there are a group of people that actually wanted to go through with it, even though it had been called off. Uh, so they did, and there were bugs which actually caused the network to fail. So had our had our funds been on the Segwit 2x network, then uh, I don't think it would be looking too healthy right now, although hopefully it would have been uh, fixed pretty quickly. But something worth knowing um, and kind of validates the concerns that I raised about uh, Segwit 2x and and its faulty code that the core team had been pointing out for quite some time. Um, some other interesting news, Trading212, which is a CFD trading website similar to eToro, uh, based in the UK, has actually had loads of drama surrounding Bitcoin Cash. Um, they added Bitcoin Cash at a similar kind of time to eToro, and a bunch of people took out long positions and um, Trading212 basically closed their website uh, or closed the ability to close trades for around 15 or 20 minutes while Bitcoin Cash was rising and uh, have refused to pay out um, to the take profits and stop losses that people had set on their website. So they've been negotiating with people privately to try and come to agreements with them. But something around around 10 million um, pounds worth of trades were open uh, that are currently being disputed, according to Coindesk. So <laughs> something maybe to remember every time um, you get frustrated with eToro, because eToro at least have a reputation for following through and, and doing the right thing um, for the traders if these kind of things have ever happened. Some other news, uh, Ripple partnered with American Express. Um, we don't know the extent of the partnership uh, quite yet, but basically it's being used as an underlying uh, network for transactions between the US and the UK. So some pretty good news there for, for Ripple, and uh, as a result they rallied up to around $0.27 cents before dropping back down to $0.23, cents, which is roughly where it is now. Um, the final piece of news is that Bitcoin broke 8 k So it was on Sunday uh, that it did it. Um, it had almost broken it previously as well, um, a couple of days earlier, but it's finally broken 8k. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it performs this week. Basically, if it can if it can stay above there, then I think the bull trend that I've previously mentioned um, upcoming for Bitcoin will probably begin pretty soon. So um, I would I would probably buckle in for a few positions and get ready for for uh, a long ride up to around 10k. With possibly a dip, though, I think there could be a dip in the nearer term. Uh, stock news. So, as I mentioned earlier, Tesla finally uh, revealed their the semi truck that they have been working on. Um, it has a 500 mile range, which is at the top end of what I was hoping for. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, they've already got quite a few pre-orders for it from various different companies. Some, you know, they're mainly pilots um, and tests, effectively. But it includes companies such as Walmart, which is, is great news for Tesla. The surprising thing about their announcement is that they also decided to show off the new Roadster, which has got a 620 mile range and a 0 to 60 uh, speed um, time thing of 1.9 seconds, which is absolutely mental. Um, so I'm expecting that car will also do pretty well. And I think they're taking pre-orders on that already. So the truck isn't available until 2019 and the uh, new Roadster will not be around until 2020, so uh, pretty interesting. Um, it looked like the event went down well. Tesla share prices rose for a bit, but it seems to be 
seems to be um, heading back down um, on Monday as I'm recording this video. So we'll see where that settles, but I think it should settle somewhere between between the two levels of 300 and 325. Um, Square. So I actually bought a couple of positions in Square and I've done a few trades in it and I'm looking to acquire more. Um, Square added Bitcoin support, which is, again, pretty interesting move. Uh, I think that actually Bitcoin is becoming less popular as a means of payment. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they decided to do, that, to do it now. But at the same time, I think it's unpopular because it's quite difficult to use. And Square making it easy for vendors um, will certainly help in the adoption of Bitcoin being used as a form of payment. So it's, it's good news and the, the stock has been rallying very heavily since then. Um, as we know, blockchain is a bit of a buzzword at the moment, so uh, it's not too surprising that the share price has increased. Uh, EA, EA news. So this is pretty crazy. Um, on Reddit, uh, there was, this was the most upvoted topic on Reddit of all time. And basically it's down to the pay to win mechanisms that are built into um, the new Star Wars game. And they're built into most EA games and EA have been a kind of, front runner in this kind of this kind of monetization for some time um but it seems like the public have finally um kicked back against it and they're pretty unhappy and so now ea are in a position where they're having to go back into the the game and kind of dampen down um all of these different uh monetization methods that they have um <clears throat> this is something that i actually spoke about before um that loot crop loot crates and loot boxes are potentially pretty damaging for the gaming industry and unhealthy uh there's a lot of um there's a lot of talk about mobile games and things like that where it's even targeted towards children um and yet they have micro payments in the game for you know 10 15 pounds to buy different heroes or different skins and different guns and things so this has been a long time coming i think and there is potential for this to upset the entire gaming industry if this continues to, to blow up. So I'm being pretty cautious with my gaming positions at the moment. I don't have anything in EA, but I do still have some positions open in Activision. Um, and I think that they are actually down a little bit since this news started to surface. But we'll keep an eye on the situation. Uh, next up is Garmin. So Garmin have integrated with United Health um, for their motion scheme program which is basically uh, a method whereby employers can pay um, to, to use this, this program with their staff. And it basically incentivizes their staff, staff to do healthy things. So take a certain number of steps, go for a run, all of these kind of things. And it pays out um, to those members of staff. So it's basically a gamification of a healthy living um situation so pretty cool it's not really big news but it's it's kind of interesting to see it see it uh integrated with garmin and uh, i think it's only on the vivo active 3 um smartwatch at the moment but uh it should be i imagine that this should be something pretty simple to roll out um across the entire garmin uh health infrastructure basically but uh yeah some some pretty good news for garmin there nothing too exciting but i figured that i'd, I'd include it anyway because it's it's pretty cool. So <clears throat> this week's uh, trading stats. So <laughs> this is this is my favorite page. Um, last week I closed a lot of trades. Last last week I closed around, around seventy one trades. But um, all of the stats on this page are related to realized gains. So these are trades that I have closed this week. It doesn't include trades that I've opened. Um, so obviously the amount of profit you may see in your your balance could be different to what's shown here. Um, but yes, uh, 30 trades closed in total, all of them were profitable, um, average trade size just over 1% and average trade profit was uh, just over 4%, which is pretty, pretty decent. Interestingly, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash and Ethereum uh, were joint first for the most traded instrument this week. So total profit this week of 1.5% uh, on the positions closed. Which leads us to where we're now sitting uh, with uh, around two weeks left of November, one and a half weeks. Um, we're sitting at uh, just under 11% profit, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, honestly. Um, I think it will continue to go higher. I think 15% is definitely possible the way that 
the cryptocurrency market is moving right now. We could even see as high as 20% this month. Um, but at the same time, there are some concerning things going on in the cryptocurrency space, which uh, which could lead to um, a bit more of a, a price collapse or not a collapse, but a sharp correction. So BitConnect, Bitfinex, uh, USD Tether, there's quite a few little situations like this that are potentially damaging to the cryptocurrency um, ecosystem overall, which could hurt our, our profit this month or certainly next month. <clears throat> So looking forward, <laughs> what's coming up next week um, and in the weeks to come. So uh, Black Friday is obviously coming up um, at the end of the week. Um, that will obviously be pretty important for Amazon and several other of the retailers. I don't actually have very many shares in these kind of companies at the moment, so it's not as big a deal of me for me as it normally is. But I expect, as always, the trend to continue to push further and further towards um, internet companies and away from um, the usual retailers. <clears throat> Bitcoin, as I mentioned before, I expect to start running towards the CME Group um, futures, uh, which is in early December. And I think uh, my oil shorts, which I've been playing around with for the last week or so, should uh, should start turning green. Um, I've actually closed one just before making this video, so uh, in profit. So it's looking pretty good on my oil shorts. But uh, I think that's something that I'm probably going to keep doing uh, for the time being um, until, I, until I see a reason to stop. But at the moment, it seems like pretty safe trades uh, that help diversify a portfolio. So that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys liked it. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, I will be trying to put together um, another video of some sort, which will be a bit more in depth, perhaps every week or every two weeks about my thoughts about different cryptocurrencies or um, you know the, the thought process behind some of the stock positions I'm taking. But this video is meant to serve more as a, a, a weekly status update basically for all of my investors. So hopefully you like it. Please follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all of that stuff. And please subscribe on this YouTube so that I can actually get a dedicated URL because currently I don't have one. Um, and I don't know what I need to get one, but I think it's subscribers. So, <laughs> so if you can subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the website if you need any more information. And feel free to leave comments about your thoughts on what was discussed in today's video. See you later, everyone.